Here to speak with Keiken about their work. My name is Annika. Johan König and I, we curate the exhibition series The Artist is Online together. Keiken are part of the exhibition with their film Feel My Meta Metaverse. So let's try to find them. Yes, this is my Nirvana hoodie. Hello. <laughs> okay, trying to find Keiken. Here they are. This time around, perfect. Hi, Miriam. Happy birthday to my friend, Miriam. Hi. Hi, it works. Excellent. Yeah, it works now. Perfect. Good. It was just a bit of a glitch there. Yeah, technical issues. And there were only like two people watching. Hi, Kai. So we're back and we're here with you. Um, you are part of Kaken. What does Kaken mean, actually? So Kaken means actually experience in Japanese and um, immersive experiences have always been at the heart of our practice. Um, also, it's not just me. I'm Isabel, <laughs> but um, I work. So I co-founded it with Hannah Umori and Tanya Cruz. And we've worked with many collaborators coming in and out. Okay, cool. So you are three people working with many creatives. How do you work as a collective? We had Bans and Buwinkel on here yesterday they are two people and they refer to a joke that's being made about um policemen because they always work uh, as a you know couple and they said one can write and one can read how is it when you work together if, with three people well um we actually i mean we were actually the friends before we started to collaborate together so hannah and tani actually knew each other from college so they go way back um and but we talk all the time with it's incredibly collaborate like collaborative and um we like we were it becomes we it's actually quite strange doing this talk by myself because we're so used to talking as a three yeah. and what's great about working as a three is if i'm t if i forget something or i can't finish my sentence the other one will pick it up for me um whereas now i actually have to think of okay i need to remember everything but it's it's great it's kind of it's a very close relationship like we talk all the time like there's not a, it's strange when there's a day when i don't have a message from them and do you work i mean how does it actually work do you have like a slack thing or do you work via whatsapp or email so we communicate via Facebook Messenger, and then we are, in a way, our studio has often operated as Google Drive. Okay. Um, so we spend a lot of time on Google Drive, and that also allows, that's allowed us to work with many people, but not always be in the same place. Um, though we were before COVID-19 getting to a point where we were having a bit more of a space in London, but now we've gone back to Skyping all day and working and messaging all day and working uh, collectively on Google Drive um, and giving each other tasks to do. <laughs> You're giving each other's tasks, that's, that's exactly. good. Exactly. <laughs> we have to try and reduce each other sometimes. And um, like, if we're going to get through all this work, you know, we've got to structure our time, you've got to do this. And then, but of course, we're also all friends. So, um, yeah we sometimes end up joking quite a lot which is lovely that's good to hear and we're going to show your film feel my metaverse in a bit after this talk yes. uh, we tell people later where they can find it and how the whole website works and the film was part of transmediale earlier this year it was shown like with performances and so on oh people are sending hearts thank you very much <laughs> uh, can actually see my friend my friends have sent some hearts as well okay Hi. sweet okay w one thing for the viewers you can send in questions and we're going to answer them later on you can send them via the question mark thing on the bottom of this page and then i'm going to check um yeah and then we're going to answer them so yeah the film meter was was shown at transmediale and it's going to be part of a of an exhibition at frankfurter kunstverein Kunstverein in German, which has been installed, but I think has it has it been open to the public? No, it it was <laughs> due to open on the twenty sixth of March, and actually oh, no. we we only I mean it's got the full installation, so it's got um, these um, the so in it it's got these foam seating that we managed to just get through the border in time. Otherwise, that seating would have never got there, which is oh, well. 
funny but it's it's very strange to have installed an exhibition or that installation but not being able to see it but it's amazing seeing the photos and they've done some amazing video content as well um you can actually check it all out on their website on the frankfurter Transferite website yeah i've seen installation shots as well looks looks really good so i guess it uh, would be good if you could explain to our viewers what a metaverse is well so um a metaverse it's a sort of collective virtual space it's almost if you imagine the future of the internet what would happen if we go a bit further um mm -hmm. it describes the space a virtual space that we can use collectively and it encompasses many different levels of experience from physical to augmented to virtual reality and it's also persistent so it's always existing and you might eventually have a universe of a metaverse so we can maybe really live in this space. So it's going, yeah, going back to my point, it goes beyond, it's this idea beyond the, the internet as we currently know it. And what is the film about? Can you, I mean, I guess it's a bit complicated to explain the whole thing, but like on a very basic level, what, what is the film about? So on a sort of, yeah, a basic level, it's, um, it's a hyperfictional future um, where the earth, so it's imagined future where the earth has been rendered uninhabitable and we have due to climate, the climate crisis and also um, in a um, struggle class, different class struggles. And in this crisis, they have to come up with a very quick idea to solve it. So they, um, Alipay, Corporation I, Alipay, which is a Chinese corporation, they set up these life units where humans now live in a metaverse and they now live in virtual worlds so they don't really inhabit the earth anymore which is kind of quite we didn't even though this is was supposed to predict something very far in the future it feels a lot closer to home because we've had the COVID-19 and now we're all staying at home and going on the internet more so we're using the internet much more we're using this tool much more and we're living um, in a physical space in a very micro way, but we're living macro in our macro way online, which is not so far off what the film, uh, what the narrative of the film was created. Um, it's also about, it also critiques um, corporate visions of the future and futurist visions of the future, such as in Silicon Valley and questions then. Um, and we try and come up with also alternative visions. So we try and imagine um, a future some uh, so there's one world which is much more progressive so how can you use tech as an emancipatory tool because tech isn't always inherently progressive and there are three protagonists yes there is and then there's also a narrator as well um so the three characters so the film mm. has these three characters main characters um the first is C, who you thought will first see in the film. Um, C is a very, C mostly um, um, lives in Poem Sector, which is one of the virtual worlds that is, exp that is explored in the film. And C is a very, is a privileged, um, more advanced human. So in terms of, they've been upgraded. So they, um, so they're, so they have synthetic lungs, for example, so they can live for much longer. And they actually have, they're one of the few humans who have access to, because the earth in this film has been renamed base reality. Um, and so they have, they're one of the few humans who have access to um, base reality. Um, and you see that also in the film, they go to their own sort of private, private space. Um, and then the next character. So the next two characters, we actually worked with um, two collaborators as well who played them and we did face scans of them as well. And we also use motion capture data as well um, for them, for those two characters. So there's Pando who lives, so you see in three different forms and who live in the different worlds. And they, they question, they, so they start questioning the reality they live in. And I'm, um, actually I don't want to give the narrative away too much actually, um, but it was, that character we worked with Sakima Crook, who's this most amazing contemporary dancer. And we wanted to have a really good role model actually playing that character. It's important to um, whoever you cast in these films that it's, um, it's progressive and not just only um, 
yeah, oh, I can keep seeing messages from people being like, hi, Izzy, hi, everyone. Yeah, everyone um, says hi. So hi, people. Hi, hi Zaymon. Hi. So let's see, let's see who's on. Who who else wants to say hi? Then we do it. Yeah, shout -out. I'm scrolling it up. Oh, so who's sick. on here? So uh, uh, let's see. It's Manuel. Hi, Manuel. We launched his solo show. Surprisingly, the Straga works. I think it was uh, last week. Um, yeah, you can visit Surprisingly, the Straga works via the app König Gallery. Then we have my friend friend Miriam on here. It's her birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Miriam. It's great to have you as a friend. Who else? Hi, Wednesday, Kim. Hi, Kim. You can see my friend Joanne with a heart. Hi. And then Andre as well. Hi. Hi, bye, bye. Hi, <laughs> So we said hi, okay. We We're said done. our hi now. Oh, yeah. I'll explain the last character. The last character yeah. is O. Uh, and O it only lives in the better world um, 068 and is a kind of non they don't look human and they're a child and they they have you know amazing sensory learning abilities and they um, live in this digital forest and they learn through non-linear learning and unlearning relearning role-playing because when you're a child you to learn you role-play your future and so I think we wanted to touch or play on that idea when we were making this film mm -hmm. as well okay cool uh, hi, Bans and Bohinkel. Hi, more than just plumbers. Hi, everyone. Um, I was wondering how the film was made because you had so many people working with you on it and I think it was made in a game engine. So can you explain how something mm -hmm. like this works? Yes, yeah, so we made the film in a gaming engine called Unreal and it completely changes the process of filmmaking or even making some forms of CGI. Um, so when you make work in a gaming engine, you can build you can build these worlds and you have different levels and there's so much capacity for you to keep growing them or adding on to them. So this is why we've also been able to um, do these interactive gamified performances because we can build these levels um, and you can build in interactive elements. So for example, at Transmediale, we um, had, we the users could um, go onto this um, controller or this mobile site where when they would press a button, changes would happen live in front of them, um, mm -hmm. such as when they would press the button, trees would start growing. Um, we worked with um, there's programmers called Offworld, um, and also to make the CGI, we worked a lot with collaborator George Jasper Stone as well. Um, but it allows us to keep revisiting on these worlds as well. And also even the rendering time. So typically when you um, would build something in CGI, it takes so long to render out. Um, rendering is like the processing of, I guess the exporting the, like exporting out as a film. And mm. in Unreal, because it's a gaming engine, you can render so much faster. So it allows, so it allowed us to make such a long film in the amount of time we made that film if that makes sense. Totally. <laughs> okay. And um, we're going, I mean, we caught what we're doing tonight an online movie night. It's Sunday night and we thought it would be fun to show, to show a film that's part of the, the exhibition we're going to show later um, at König Gallery, like in Berlin, the Rotary mm -hmm. Church. That's planned. I mean, the show was planned to open April 9th, but like everyone else, we had to postpone. And um, now we're going to show the movie on a website you've just put together, I guess. So what is going to happen on the website? What can people do? Should I there? show the website? I'm going to go through it. Or should I wait a bit? What do you think? Do you want to show the website? Then you can show the website. Okay, great. Let me do I think um, it's, it's better if you, if you explain it to people. Okay, great. Um, so <laughs> we're showing film and metaverse while we can't show it in a physical space. So that's why we'll have this online movie night. And for us, um, because we're in, because because we have this sort of multi-dimensional practice, we didn't want to just show the film um, as in like a Vimeo link or something. We wanted to um, make it much more experiential and also provide with it a sort of inventory. So in gaming, you have an inventory where you can collect. Um, so a game player will collect their different sort of um, 
pools, I guess. So we've made an inventory and then we've also got a space called Grow My Metaverse as well, where you can contribute as well. It's just a questionnaire and list of resources at the moment because um, we want to start, we want to continue to grow this metaverse and um, keep mm. building on it essentially. Um, so yeah, it's a more experiential way to um, go and find the film. So it's at our, our metaverse.live. So I'll start, I'll show it now actually. Is it live already or do, is it live in 10 minutes when we finish here? It's like, do you want it to get, it's live now actually. It's just been live now. Okay, people, please stay with us. <laughs> yes, don't go straight, straight away yet. Um, shall I? I'll, I'll show you the opening page anyway. So you enter in. Step inside the screen. Are you sitting comfortably? Welcome to the metaverse. I am GPS Moral Compass. Compass. And you can find the simple. film here, so at Mess of Us TV as well. And then you can find, um, I'll go back here. And then you can also find the inventory as well here. And you can click on these different um, assets as well. Oh, look, there's the filter that we've just made as well. Yeah, yeah, we plan to launch the filter you made for this uh, Instagram sadly rejected it so we had to uh so now we wait for approval from instagram but the filter is already on your instagram on Kaken, right so mm -hmm. people yeah. can go to your page and can you say a few words about the mm -hmm. filter mm -hmm. um yes yeah, so we've just made it live on our page um so you can go on the tab as well it's called O. so it's based on the cat one of the protagonists O. Um, we've made for, which you'll actually be able to find on the website and we've posted as well, um, these animatic posters. So it was the idea of a play, a play on um, the movie poster, but it moves. So in this filter, you can become the character O. And in, in, that, in that, in 068, which is the digital forest um, world. Great, so people head over to Kaken and we're going to have it live on Koenig Gallery super soon, we hope. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> let's, let's hope this is going to happen very soon. And people, do you have questions? Hi, Tom, hope you're still there. No questions yet. I guess people are, people are on the website now watching. Oh no, <laughs> I might have revealed it too soon. <laughs> no, don't worry. So any questions, people? I mean, uh, I've seen that you're going to launch a new project next week, right? Yeah, we are. Um, we're back to Liverpool. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Augmented Empathy. Um, and each week we'll be releasing a filter, which will set a challenge um, and we'll, get, we'll collect these different responses. And it's exploring, can we use filters as an empathy tool to connect to... Um, to humans but also non-humans or post-human mm -hmm. um and this was gonna this is gonna develop later on in the year into a more physical project where we'll do a performance and they'll also when the gallery can open we'll also make work from it but at the moment it's um at the moment we just want everyone to come and do the challenges try on the filters see how it made them feel. Um, and the first one will be released on Tuesday at, so head to Fat Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, Tuesday it is. And now that I see the question from Stella Gappert, she asked, are you inspired by analog works by contemporary artists? It just came to my mind that I was thinking about your work earlier today. And then I thought, well, how can I, can I explain to people who haven't heard about you before how can can i explain what you're doing and it came to my mind that you're like the new john raffman or the new ed atkins but sort of like next level because your work is interactive and it's collaborative so what how do you feel about this comparison it's making it's making me blush a bit i think <laughs> Actually, actually, um, where so where I grew up is not very far from where Ed Atkins grew up. So yeah. I'll say it's quite funny. Um, but 
Um, no, it's, that's a and that's a really huge compliment, and it's you know making me blush. Um, I think, yeah, I think what what we're what we're trying to do that um, we really believe in is because we're collaborative practice and because we're building these worlds, when you do world building, you need, it allows multiple people to work on that same world at the same time. And also if you're building these new imaginary spaces or metaverse um, worlds, we want to encompass many different voices in that. And it, you need to have a, a collaboration to do that. Um, and I think by having lots of collaborators coming out and our synergy um, and commitment to each other um, as a collaborative practice, it can help grow and push those worlds so much further than I could as an individual. I wouldn't be able to do that kind of work without everyone as well and make those kind of that next level of interact, making it interactive. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So let's answer the question by Stella Gephardt. Are you inspired by analog works by contemporary artists as well? Um, let me just have a think. I mean, yeah, of course I am. Inspired. I, I am very inspired by um, analog works. I'm just trying to think which. I, I think personally for me, I don't know exactly about the others, but my background is um, in performance art. So I studied a lot of um, the performance art that happened in the 60s and 70s. I love Carl Schumann, um, Yaiko Sama's early work. Um, let me try and think who else. Um, because I'm interested in how you use how you can make that experience in the live moment or how you can make something performative or experiential and like challenge um, challenge the boundaries of reality or of the medium so in that sense yeah I guess I'm inspired have been inspired by those contemporary artists as well and their experiment their experiments in a live setting mm -hmm. and how about digital artists are you inspired by any anyone Just who's working right now um yes um we we've, we've always loved uh, Cecil B Evans um I remember going mm -hmm. to what the heart wants in um the Berlin Biennale mm -hmm. a few years ago I think it's 2016 yes. and completely loved it because I love that she uses these archetypes and creates these narratives as well um between and comments on our reality in relation to the um the digital as well um and you also like to use yeah as i was saying before like to use these metaphors in the work we also find we also really love um brian carton as well um who i also got to experience um in berlin for the first time that was amazing are you you're, are you based in london or i think one of you is based in berlin right so I did live in Berlin for a couple of years, but I'm mm -hmm. now based in London and then Tani's based in Berlin. Okay, cool. But we have some collaborators in Berlin. Um, we work with Sophie Mars, who's, who was the performer in Transmedale. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another question. I switch off the comments for one second. P uh, people, please send your questions behind the scenes now. We have one from... Peter Niemann. Hi, Peter. Thank you for being here with us. So Peter's question is, why are all these filters around and where do they come from? Why are there all these filters around? Well, they are taking over maybe on Instagram. They're everywhere. Um, so I think about a year ago, maybe two years ago, um, Instagram opened up this program called Spark AR and it was at first it was a beta stage. We managed to get onto the end of the beta stages so when it wasn't open to everyone to make mm. um, and I think artists, um, artists but also just different creators or designers, um, they could see that who were already operating on social media could see the potential of these tools because they can be sort of seamlessly integrated um, into your stories. Um, so you can you can make a filter if you you can download spark ar for free and you can start making your own filter and you can upload it as long as you finish the guideline you just have to have an instagram and facebook account yeah but why do you think uh especially artists are so interested in making filters and i mean i think the most interesting filters come from artists like andy Pichy. He mm -hmm. made a filter 
that's sort of like a solo exhibition in the mm -hmm. filter. He built a white cube and you mm -hmm. can go in there via AR, Spark AR and then you can walk around the room, look at art and so on and so on. What do you think? Why, why is this so interesting for, for artists to use? I mean, I have to think about that one. It's it. I think because I think because it's. I think artists before were already using Instagram a lot to showcase or even make work. Um, or it's also the audience you can reach as well with the filters. If you just made an augmented reality app, it's going to be a lot harder to distribute. Whereas with the filters, it it's also it's a subversion of reality as well because you've got you know you've got the social media or Instagram has obviously so many different people who aren't just an art audience as well. So you can connect to a non art, art, art audience through it and it can be distributed in a like, much like larger way. And it's also seamlessly integrated into our reality because everyone um, documents themselves um, through their stories and you can wear filters with that. So it is a subversion of reality. And I think that's personally why I think we're really interested in them but probably maybe other artists are too. And you've been part of the thing that took place last year at Tate, at Tate London, right? Was it last year? Yeah, I think so. Zay, so Zabe of Her Visions did um, mm. so called Face Up. Yeah, exactly. So we gave our first filter, which is called Vital Life Force. It's, um, you can kind of, with your mouth, you can expand this sort of like bubble type thing. Um, it's still available so you can go and um, find it on our Instagram page in the tabs um, and we were we conceptualized it as this um, kind of meditative like breathing breathe, sort of breathing force that also protects you which also feels quite relevant to now we actually made this little video as well that there's this protective bubble but also it helps your um, it helps with because you're of your breathing in and out it's sort of there's a meditativeness to it as well um we've also shown and actually filters are more and more being um exhibited so i know we did we showed a few filters um with salem x as well and then it's been really interesting um recently as well that um we've been able to put filters onto different institutions so we just released one recently onto heck basil um, mm -hmm. And then, um, so I think that's an interesting space as well that, and that these filters are going to be more and more exhibited. Okay, here are more questions for you. And now the thing is not working. I love it when the Q&A is not working. Now it's working again. Okay. Okay, there's one for me. I'm going to answer mm -hmm. this. Yes, I've been trying everything, Pepsi, Afri Cola, Fritz Cola, um, but I prefer Coca-Cola and this is not a commercial break because we're not sponsored <laughs> by Coca-Cola. I just love Coca-Cola. <laughs> it is really good. It, I prefer it than Pepsi, to be honest. I mean, Pepsi is horrible, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, but then when they do tests, um, apparently you don't see what the brand is. Uh, often people prefer Pepsi, but I don't know if that's because it's sweeter. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, we won't talk about Pepsi for too long. I should I should um do a do a test once. Okay. Yes. Did you look at any sci fi writings? If so, any heroes? Um I uh, so I mean not I am trying to think. So I've looked at I'm trying to remember the sorry, no I just my brain it's gone, but um I watched what's that like very famous um, sci -fi, sort of Japanese sci-fi film um, which watched a lot of writings as well um, and let's then, ask people what that could be what could yeah oh, oh Octavia Butler as well we've read up lost on um, what's that book called and ta yeah and Tani ta Tani's actually just messaging me she's read a lot of alpha um, afro futurist um, sci-fi Tani can you Tani, are you there? Can you give me some names of what you've read? Oh, that's, that's, that's great. That would be helpful. Do you Please, have I need some help. I need, see, this is a great example of when I'm struggling to answer a question and then I need these guys, those guys to help me out. But they're not here. Instagram, you need to, you they're need not to improve. Here. 
I'm gonna yeah. message them. Yeah, yeah, but we Instagram, can run. You need to improve your, you know, Instagram live. We need it for more people because then Johan could be here with me. But exactly. Only... Oh, that Carol of the Sower. That's the one. Yeah, Tani's just gone on her personal account. Okay, let's let's complain to Instagram. <laughs> yeah, definitely. This was all because of Instagram. I know. I wish we could all just be here together. Tani, Hannah, we miss you. <laughs> Octavia Butler. Oh, there she is. Okay, cool. So we answered this question. Let's see if there are more questions. Nope, not right now. So I think we can start the online movie night right now. So what do people yes. have to do? They just have to type in their browser. Um, yeah. Our metaverse dot live right i'll actually just type it out as well so people can see uh metaverse oh tani just say feels very relevant today so. i'm going to do a swipe up in kerner gallery's instagram stories so that people um can just swipe up that is our metaverse live you can go there and then you have to click in the menu on metaverse tv right yeah exactly you need to go to metaverse tv to watch the film and after the film or before go explore the inventory you can discover some new things there which will relate to the film yeah and you can go to your instagram page to try the filter and become one mm -hmm. of the protagonists in the movie and we hope we'll exactly. be able to launch the filter on koenig gallery's instagram as well over the next couple of days exactly and now I have to mention that Johan will be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Berlin time with an open call. So if you are an artist, um, you can you can request being uh, on the show and Johan is going to do a studio visit live via Instagram. Um, yeah, that's about it, I guess. So let's drink something and eat pizza yes. and watch your exactly. film. Yes, eat pizza, drink something while watching it. It'll be very, it'll be a great experience. I promise you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye.